Hey, good evening. It's Friday, August 27th. Thanks so much for being here tonight. We're going to continue looking at the power of gentleness, of pleasant words, and how when these weapons of the Spirit are deployed in parenting, the forces of evil are no match for them. It doesn't mean that there won't be difficult times or seasons or things that will challenge us, but it does mean that we can trust the Spirit of God through His Word to encourage us and help us. So that's the reason that I want to keep looking at this. And Proverbs chapter 15 has some incredibly helpful things for us. And part of the problem when we look at the Proverbs is we slice them up in individual verses is that they weren't meant that, meant that way. They were meant to be taken as a whole. Hebrew poetry has individual sections in it. And this parallelism that's in Hebrew poetry gives us a power that is far greater, an understanding that is far greater, than if we just try and read the Proverbs as individual lines. So listen to these passages from the beginning of chapter 15. I'm reading from Bruce Walkie's original translation. It'll be very similar to yours, but it has a punch to it that I think is really helpful. A gentle answer turns back wrath, but a painful word stirs up anger. Then the second line, the tongue of the wise adorns knowledge, but the mouth of fools gushes forth folly. Now notice the parallel lines. The, the top line in each one compares with the two verses. A gentle answer turns back wrath. The tongue of the wise adorns knowledge. So the gentle answer defeats, pushes away wrath, defeats it. It actually propitiates it, is the word that's used there. It defeats it. It wins. It's what Jesus does when he wins with our sins. And then the corresponding to that is the tongue of the wise adorns knowledge. In other words, the people who love God, who are committed to wisdom, they make knowledge look attractive. And that's what we want to do when we're talking to our children or to other people. We want the word of God to be attractive, not oppressive. Not to push us down, but to build us up. So that's what it means here, that the wise tongue makes the words of God, adorns the truth of God. But then the, the two negative parallelisms on each one, but a painful word stirs up anger, and the mouth of fools gushes folly. Instead of healing, instead of bringing joy and encouragement, it tears down, it hurts, it cuts to the core. And the fool is a person who lives as if there is no God. He just gushes forth more garbage and more hurtful stuff, and they can't stop. Then the second two lines in this four-verse um, grouping here, the eyes of the Lord are in every place. They're everywhere, watching diligently evil people and good people. So that's an encouragement to us, that God is watching. He knows exactly what's going on whether we're interacting with good people, whether we've been hurt by evil people. And then the last one tonight, a soothing tongue, a healing tongue is a tree of life, but perversity in it fractures the spirit. In other words, the perversity of the tongue, as James 3 warns us, is so destructive. And where our spirits, our souls are actually fractured. And you know, I know what that means. We know what happens when words crush us. We know when we crush other people. But this, this line gives us hope. These four lines together give us hope because notice what it says here. A soothing tongue or a healing tongue is a tree of life. That's why I use the image of the tree of life in the thumbnail tonight. Think about this. Your words can actually bring healing by focusing on God's truth, on speaking gentle truth, gentle words using the, only the force that's appropriate, the power of gentleness, which we see demonstrated in the life of Jesus Christ, his power, his might, his glory. Gentleness is not some weak thing. Gentleness is power because it's doing what God wants. It's responding to us the way that God wants us to respond. So the healing tongue, the soothing tongue, it's a way of life. It can help us. It can take care of us and it can bring healing to those that we love. 
those that we've injured or, the, or people who have been injured by others. Knowing someone, speaking words that are gentle, that give the truth, the pleasantness of the Word of God, adorning the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, acknowledging the pain that's been done, the gushing of evil tongue that has been done, how someone has been hurt, but then acknowledging that, knowing that God has placed us in a place where we can talk about His truth with joy. A soothing tongue is a tree of life. And that's what I want to leave you with tonight. There's hope. There's great power in trusting the Spirit of God to do what the Spirit of God alone can do. You and I can't make it right, but God can. And we can make it right by addressing Him using His power, using His language, using His methodology. Not returning bad for evil, but having the courage to be gentle. If we've been hurt, not focusing on how badly it hurts us, but how can I show Christ to this person who's been hurt? And I do that with gentle words. I do that with encouragement. I do that with compassion and understanding and knowing them and speaking truth to where they are. Our kids need that. You and I need that. Such beautiful hope. Your words can be the tree of life, the tree of healing to those that need it. And that's, that's such a beautiful thing. And we'll keep talking about this, but give me your thoughts. Give me, you know, keep feeding back. I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you haven't turned on subscriptions, do that and hit post notifications. These will come right to you. Check us out every day, talk247.com and check out the new reading list that's on there. We want to work together so that our words can be healing, can be the tree of life, the life-giving words of the gospel to our children, which include everything that we do 24-7. May God bless us. May our everyday talk be something that brings healing all the time. And that's the thought for this night. And Lord willing, look forward to seeing you again in the morning. Again, love your comments and feedback. You have a great evening. Lord bless you. Bye-bye.